John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me, because he existed before him. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. God is a God of surprises. His Holiness Pope Francis says that, and I love that line. I find it so true. There are good surprises, there are bad surprises. But by definition, it is not what you expect. And that shakes you, it catches you. The idea is it allows you to think differently, for as you were thinking will not fit whatever is going on. There is John proclaiming the coming of the Messiah, and he is denying that it is him and how many people want it to be him. And thank God John has already been sanctified in his mother's womb, because I know my own weakness. I know I would have loved for it to be me. Yeah, no, the crowd thinks it's, I'm the Messiah, I guess I am the Messiah. Well, God has left him with this aspect of uncertainty. You do not know who is the one you will be baptizing, who you will be marking off as the Messiah. It seems that John has only met his cousin once, and then they were both in their mother's wombs. And then he sees him, and he comes to him. Jesus Christ. His name is repeated four times in the second reading and the space of less than, that's one sentence because it's Paul. <laughs> Paul could do a lot with one sentence. Can you imagine being a scribe, having to just keep writing and, anyways. He says his name four times in a sentence. And by the end of the chapter, he says it another six times. So important is the holy name of Jesus Christ. No other name like it. As I was telling the children in school the other day, we all know who George Washington is, and he was an important historical figure, but if you stub your toe or somebody cuts you off in traffic, nobody says, ah, George Washington. That'd be stupid. <laughs> because good a man, as great a man as George Washington was, not the Son of God, not the one who redeems the world, not the one who utilizes absolute power. And when you're angry, what do you want to do? You want to exert your own power and say, I can do this even though I shouldn't. Like throwing a vase against a wall. And so people take the holy name of their Savior in vain. The most beautiful, the most precious thing they have that can roll off their tongue. Against the wall it goes. Surprise. It can be good or bad, and how you respond in that surprise always revolves around God, always in truth revolves around truth, Jesus Christ. Every conflict you have and you come in contact with is a matter of theology, my brothers and sisters, I promise you, ultimately. Whether it be a difference of politics, hair care, whatever it is, to some extent, it is a matter of theology. Peter makes mention of, I don't know why God wants me to talk about hair care, bear with me. The, I don't know why Peter says, it must have been a problem. He says, the women who are Christian, don't go nuts with your hair and don't, don't put on all this fancy gold and jewels. He says, let your adornment be your good deeds. and your kindness and your simplicity and the care you give your families. He says, that's what adorns a Christian woman. It is a matter of theology, how you look. And you come in contact with a broken world and it shocks you. But our God is a God of surprises. Again, everybody is so convinced 
The world is so convinced they've got God figured out. They can, can put him in a box. He's the boring thing in the box that says I have to be good. Well, they've never met him. And then they do meet him. And he has a face. And it shocks them. And God is good to all of us. And he's good to John the Baptist. And he lets there be a shock. He sees him. And because John's so close to God already, he recognizes him. And in all the other Gospels, he steps back and says, I can't do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You should baptize me. And Jesus Christ leans forward and says, you let it be for now so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. In all humility, you will embrace the surprise I'm giving you. And he is so good to us that he allows us to minister to him even though he does not need sanctifying grace. He is sanctifying grace, for crying out loud. But what an honor he gives to John the Baptist. And John pours the water, and the water itself is sanctified by touching the Savior. It's an incredible, incredible, incredible gift. John must have trembled. And then he cries out, I didn't know him, but here he is. Here he is. What a surprise. What a great and glorious surprise that God is among us and is moving with us and through us and for us every day. I don't know why they do this. They chopped up the first reading again. It's always dangerous coming into a Catholic church. We have all kinds of books. This is how, again, again reading is perfectly fine. It communicates more or less what was in there, but, but here it is in its totality, and I need it to continue preaching to you. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb. He gave me my name. He gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword, and he concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me. Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him, and I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord. And my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord. That just strikes to the heart. The holy name of Jesus Christ is given by an angel to Mary and to Joseph. It is he who forms his servant in the womb, and the mission is so great and so transcendent. It is far beyond what the Israelites, what the Jews expect to be coming. We aren't just going to cast off an earthly empire were to cast off the satanic one. And it's not enough for it just to be the restoration of 12 tribes of the Near East. It's going to be the whole human populace brought back into union with divinity. And you, who have made yourself so low as to be my servant, as to wash the feet of fishermen the day before you are to suffer and die, the glory you will gain and earn will raise you up to the very heavens. Surprise. A sharp sword concealed. An arrow in a quiver. It's always great when air cover shows up. Sometimes it's quite a surprise to both sides. If it's on your side, it's much to your eternal gladness. If it's not on your side, you despair. Out of the quiver, God draws his perfect arrow and takes aim at the very heart of evil. 
and nobody sees it coming. And the name Jesus Christ now echoes through history and is poured out with the water at every baptism. It is not just some random ceremony some smart guys came up with that incorporates some sort of philosophical principle. It's salvific grace coming into the heart of a child. And it was secured by a man. And his name is Jesus Christ, and he lived 2,000 years ago. And he's still alive today in heaven, and he's still alive behind me in the tabernacle. Each good, holy communion is another blow against the enemy when he settles in your soul. And is a building block, raising up the kingdom of heaven to be with him where he is, body and soul. Wherever Jesus Christ is, my brothers and sisters, there is heaven, I promise you. There are people in prison cells who are far happier than men who live in mansions, for they know they are forgiven and saved, and the other is just waiting to die and hoping he can forget that is a fact. And John points the way. Every good Christian points the way. Every good Christian is on fire for the idea of forgiveness and sanctification. To wash away the sin of man, you need the Lamb of God. And he's here. And he's here. And it changes us. I promise you, it changes you. And you say, I don't feel any different, ba, 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 ba. but you know you can be. You know you will be if you let him, because he never forces you to do anything. It's a surprise when it happens, and you suddenly find you have the courage to do things you have never been capable of your entire life. And it's a humbling experience. You must be like the Baptist. You must be willing to put away the things of the world so that you can truly see. Take the log out of your eye and see the splendor that is coming from the Most High. Man, does he love us all. Man, does he love to scoop us up. Like when he's dying on his way to Calvary, he is dying. They have beaten him so badly, and they're going to keep pushing it. Crucifixion sometimes took days. He's going to be dead in three hours. He is bad shape. He is in bad shape. And he's on the ground, bleeding and coughing, and he can't breathe. He can barely breathe, and they lift the cross just an inch off of him, and he's up again. He's got to get the cross up the hill because he's holding you. Hero. If you've never seen it, we always mimic it in movies. You don't root for the guy who's completely untouched, not a hair out of place. You root for the guy whose arm's off and is still fighting is still trying to keep people out of danger. Well, that's Jesus Christ, and he's literally thinking of you personally. Personally. By name, as he grips the cross, he holds you. And it's killing him. Surprise. But all he wants is your good. He needs to get you to the top of the hill. His mother looks at him and just loves him. How do you look at him? How do we look at him? When you see him, and he will surprise you in all manner, shape, and form. Would you carry him if it was killing you? That's the mark of the martyrs.
what wouldn't you give up to gain him who loves you so much? kind of guy who takes the hit and then looks behind him at you and says, are you okay? It should strike you to the heart. And it's true. And it's real. And it continues down to this very day in the 21st century and will go on so long as time continues, which will end also, by the way. But he's promised to be with us till the very end. So I proclaim him to you. I preach only the name of Jesus Christ, this good man, this God-man, who sanctifies, who saves. Do you know? I'm going to butcher his name. The lecture did an excellent job. Sothens, Paul, called by an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sothens, our brother. Do you know who Sothens is? He's an Acts of the Apostles. He's, he's a Jew. He's the head of a synagogue in Corinth. And he lets Paul speak. And it changes him. It changes him. And the crowd in Corinth decides they don't like Paul. And they can't find him. So you know what they do? They drag Sothens out and they beat him in public. But Sothens is a servant of the living God. And it's not enough for this man to just remain a servant. God is going to raise him up. And first, he takes the blows now. As his Savior has proved his love, now this man proves his. And 2,000 years I, later, I can tell you about him. That's the glory of saints. When you know their stories, you just want to talk about them. If you don't like surprises, don't read the lives of the saints. They had their fair share. And if you don't want to be a saint, you will have no surprises in your life. What a boring existence. And what a sad end. When there is so much, so much, so much war. More through water and blood pours out. So like the Baptist, all I can do is point back to the Eucharist and tell you it's him. And I can only beg you to let him surprise you this day and every other day of your life. Because I promise you, when you live your vocation to the fullest, there is nothing boring about it. And the second you embrace it, your joys become sharper and your pain's more severe, but it's all true and totally worth it. And the reward is great and rich. The road is, is narrow and sharp. But our Savior's name is Jesus Christ. Remember the name, brothers and sisters. There is no other by which you can be saved. God bless you this morning.